this story starts 157 years ago in 1848 when George Osborne Barrett at the age of 21 left his family's well-established business in Portugal Street and rented a small premises in 32 Shepherdess Walk where he ventured into the world of sweet manufacturing little realising that by the turn of the century he would be employing a workforce of over 1,000. It is strange to think that the Eagle Public House in Shepherdess Walk has connections not only with the hat trade but with the sweet making trade. The words in the rhyme, up and down the city road, in and out the eagle, goes with the more popular verse Half a pound a tuppenny rise, half a pound a treacle, that's the way the money goes, hop goes the weasel. One day George left a batch of toffee too long on the boil, resulting in a tough and sticky mixture. Not wishing to fry it away, he put it on a handcart and went round the streets asking shopkeepers to try his new sticky toffee. The next day a shopkeeper said, that stick jaw you sold me yesterday bring me twice as much tomorrow this kick-started the Barrett name and its popularity and by 1880 his business was bursting at the seams which meant moving to a much larger premises in Woodgreen North London taking over a piano factory owned by Mr Ivory on a five acre estate of marshy grounds at Mays Road this lovely Victorian office block was built in 1897 and has the initials of the founders four sons George, Frank, Edward and Albert. He also had a daughter Elizabeth. This building today is the headquarters of the Metropolitan Housing Trust. The Barrett clock kept strict time for the workers. The management kept a sharp lookout for latecomers. Persistent offenders were fined. Alarm clocks were given out as a bonus at Christmas. This photo of the workers at the main gateway was taken about 1912. It looks like a dinner break. This picture shows the firm's outing in the 1950s. The lower building on the right was the stables for a hundred horses. With no more horses the first floor became a canteen and the ground floor the social club. If you were to view the old factory from the rear today with the Hornsey gasworks behind you, you will notice the name change from Barrett's to the Chocolate Factory. Although no chocolate or confectionery is now made here, it now houses a colony of over 150 artisans studios made up from artists, sculptures, designers, filmmakers, cabinet makers, book binders, music makers, clothes designers, animators, photographers, printers, lighting, theatre, dance and jazz studios, soft furnishing, mosaics, ceramics, wall painting, textiles, furniture making, picture framers and puppets, just to name a few. It also houses a large drama school run by the Mount View Theatre School. Many famous and would-be actors have passed through here. The block even has two restaurants, one being in the Good Food Guide. We shall return to the subject of the chocolate factory later on in this film. We are now at the rear in Coburg Road with the Duke of Edinburgh pub on the corner. This is the beginning of the triangle of three roads which surrounded the old Barrett's factory. Western Road, Mays Road and Coburg Road. This building has a fitness centre and the rest is made up of firms related to the rag trade, mainly Greek and Cypriot companies. This is the original, one of the original lifts. So 
So what floor are we going up to now? On the fifth floor. Going up to the roof. My name is Vasos. I've been here for the last 20 years. Uh, this building now has been called Parma House. It used to be Harimal House. Uh, it's changed various hands. We're now standing on the roof and we're on about now, the fourth floor, are we? Now we're standing on the roof of Parma House. Beautiful scenery. As you can see, Alexandra Palace majestically overlooking North London. As we pan over the rooftops, you can now see the extent of the area that Barrett's buildings covered. Except for some modern buildings, these were all built by Barrett's from about 1882 to nearly three quarters of the way through the 20th century. The Alexander School was built in 1900, not by Barrett's, I might add. This is the main gate where we saw the workers coming out previously. This was a covered loading yard and it is now a self-storage firm. We are now looking at Wood Green Shopping Centre in the High Road with its multi-storey car park. Now we're looking at the old Gormont Cinema. This is a multi-screen complex at Spouters Corner. The building in the rear is Wood Green Crown Court in Lordship Lane. The dark background on the skyline is Epping Forest. Another dated building, 1904 AD. You can see that some of the buildings have been demolished and some have been renovated. We are now looking at the Mount View Theatre School Complex. George Osborne Barrett died at the age of 79 in October 1906. His eldest son George William then took charge of operations. In 1908 the board of directors decided to float shares and become a limited company. George was chairman from 1906 to 1912. This is his brother Frank and this is his brother Albert who became chairman from 1912 to 1921. I am not sure of the names of the others, but here is a list of directors and their shares. The fourth name down, Joseph Barrett Stennett, is the son-in-law of Frank Barrett, who became chairman in 1921 to 1938. This is Albert Barrett and his wife Millicent in 1913, at their home in Totteridge Park, and again in 1926. Albert was knighted in 1921. This is Lady Barrett. This is George Barrett. And Sir Albert Barrett, who received his knighthood for charity works, especially with the Prince of Wales Hospital in Tottenham. The group photo is of employees from the factory at the Green which has connections with scouting with the manufacturing of scout pipes and jamboree bags. Sir Albert and Lady Barra also have connections with scouting. Sir Albert helped towards obtaining Scout Park Bounds Green for the local scouts. Lady Barra was asked to perform the opening ceremony. When being introduced by the speaker, he said, I hope this park will be a good home for scouts. And what does a good home need? And before he could finish, someone in the crowd shouted out, A mother. Since then, in scouting circles, she is known as Mother Barrett. Can you imagine this boiler being transported all the way from Lancashire by road? And how long it would have taken to cover the journey? And what a noise it would have made with all those solid wheels, plus the noise of the steam traction engine. The date is 1909, with five moors being installed in the next three years. Each boiler had its own personal stoker. 
By the 1960s, these had been modernised to be self-loading, and a few years later, they were replaced by oil-fired burners as it was cheaper to run. About the same time as this picture, we are looking at the covered loading bay near the main gateway, horsepower being the motivating force in those days. To maintain this large operation, Barretts had their own farriers, blacksmiths, wheelwrights, coach builders, harness makers and sign writers, just to name a few. Here the workers are loading up the carts before the horses are attached. The man with the paper in his hand must be the foreman. Notice the wooden crates behind him ready for transportation. The four horse wagon is loaded up with crates, possibly going to the London docks or to a mainline railway station. These carts also collected tons of sugar and supplies from the docks. This lovely engraved book was presented to the chairman in 1910 by 1,133 workers at Wood Green whose names were inscribed inside in alphabetical order made up of 803 women and 333 men's names all with the date of the year they started at Barrett's. This being a big thank you for the trip to Clacton on two paddle steamers from Tower Pier. This is a poster advertising the Barrett's factory at Wood Green in the early part of 1900, showing the extent of its many different departments. It even states they hold £30,000 of goods in stock. This picture taken around 1930 shows Barrett's going mechanical. This is a Fornicroft. Barrett's just purchased the cab and chassis and built their own body work to it. This is a Leyland and another Leyland. This is the sign writer who was responsible for all the sweet pictures and the wordings on the van and now you can see some of his artistic achievements. I'm Dennis Plowright and I work for Barrett's in 1954 and 1955 and I was employed there as Deputy Chief Engineer in the Engineering Department. Everything that they could in-house. They employed uh, pipe 